Hey everyone, it's Pacific. Welcome back to another episode of SCP Archives. As a quick reminder, uh, Season 4 we're doing something a little different. Uh, Each week, over the course of 12 weeks, we're telling a story episode by episode. While you can jump in at any episode, like this one, for the best listening experience, it's suggested that you start at Serapis, Part 1. Also, a quick reminder, over the last few months we've been making a ton of changes to our Patreon, Uh, many changes we're still making, but the biggest and the coolest is we've switched over to monthly postcards. Which means if you're interested in getting March's postcard, you can sign up right now at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And for all of our new and continuing patrons at $10 or above, in addition to a postcard, this March you're also going to get two new stickers and a button. Uh, All of those designs will be on our Patreon later this month. Uh, as well as on our Twitter at SCP underscore POD. So make sure you're following us on Patreon and Twitter so you can see all of those cool updates. That's all I got for this week, uh, but this is perhaps my favorite episode of SCP Project Therapist. So without further ado, enjoy this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. This is Agent Hector Gallio. The following is classified level 5 under Project Serapis. O5 eyes only. The discovery of an anomaly, SCP... ...in the area of Shibbets Vale, Montana, and the loss of the mobile task force sent to investigate it, prompted the O5 Council to seek information on the area's history and any intelligence on the nature of the anomaly. Going by my initial research, there's no shortage of unexplained events around Shibbets Vale. The region's currently unpopulated and unused, and has been since 1998 when a ski resort on the lower slopes of the Morning Cloak Mountains was abandoned shortly before it was due to open for its first season. I was working a hunch when I looked into the resort. I've learned to pay attention to them over the years. I might not be running around with a gun and a badge anymore, but I still know to trust the hairs on the back of my neck sticking up and my mouth going dry. It saved my life more than once. It might do it again. On the surface, the Whitetail Lodge Resort was just an investment gamble that didn't pay off. The Morning Cloak Mountains had decent slopes, beautiful scenery, and potential for off-season hiking and hunting. It also had almost zero infrastructure except for the handful of cabins from its use as a summer camp years before. It looked like another failed attempt to create a tourist market where one hadn't existed before. But like I said, I had a hunch. And I believe in being thorough. My days as a field agent have given me a few connections I can still call on. One of them now works in the office of the assistant director at the FBI's Unusual Incidents Unit. I tapped him up for a search on Shibbets Vale, and he dredged up an old deployment from 1997, just before the Whitetail Lodge closed down. He got copies of them to me through some old Foundation liaison channels with a note that said I definitely owe him for this one. Fortunately, the two agents sent to the resort were diligent in their record keeping. I had transcripts of their interviews, notes, photographs, debriefings, the whole thing. It started with a body. Of course it did. Mr. Fulton? That's me. I'm Special Agent Dabrowski. This is Special Agent Picton. Good afternoon. Although, I guess it isn't so good. Mr. Fulton, you're the manager here. Sure. Until the season starts. I'm just getting the place ready to open up to the tourists. So you're in charge? Kinda. As much as anyone is. The police have been here already? Of course. They're the first people we called. They came on over from Scarlow, 
away down the road. They took one look and called you guys. One of them was a new recruit. He looked pretty green around the gills. I gave him a shot of brandy in the Grand Lodge. Probably regulations against that, but, you know. Have you seen the body yourself? Jesus, no. What I heard was bad enough. Can you take us there? Sure. It's in one of the chalets. We're keeping a lot of the temporary workers there while we're getting everything set up. Most of them are two to a chalet, but... He was in this one on his own. Hey, the victim? Yeah, Mikey Sanchez. He was a construction, maintenance, odd jobs kind of guy. But there hasn't been an official identification? I did a head count at the lodge, so if it ain't him, I don't know who the hell it is. Who found the body? Maria. Poor girl. You go easy on her now. I know you gotta ask questions, but she was kinda sensitive already. After seeing all that, she's fit to fall apart. We'll be as sensitive as we can. Has anyone else been to the chalet? No way. Except the cops, maybe. I got Walter there keeping watch. He's one of the housekeeping staff. Has keys for all the chalets. He'll let you in. Then let's go. What a mess. Now I see what they called us. <sighs> Time to earn that paycheck. Walter! Yeah? Stick around. We might need to ask you about the chalets. Uh, okay. Do I have to come inside? No, stay there. Sure thing. First impressions? Chaotic. But deliberate. Premeditated. Definitely one for the UIU. What do you think? No forced entry. No struggle. Windows are closed. Blinds are down. We're far enough away from any other building that even a good scream might never be heard. Better get it all down for the record. The cops will have their own write-up, but from what the manager said, it might be spotty. The scene is a double occupancy chalet, comprising a combined living area and kitchen. Separate bedroom and bathroom. There is one door in, four windows. At first glance, none of them have signs of being forced open. The living area has a two-seater sofa, an upholstered chair, TV, coffee table, bookcase with a few paperbacks. The back wall is the kitchen. Oven, range, sink, refrigerator and freezer, cabinets and cupboards, tasteful abstract art on the walls. Finish on the walls and ceiling is bare wood. There is a wood-burning fireplace. Radiators, too, in case you don't feel like making your alpine experience quite that authentic. The body is against the east wall of the living area. Hispanic male in his 20s or early 30s. In decent shape, wearing only a pair of jeans. It is in a seated position with the back against the wall and both arms outstretched to the sides. Nails through both hands and elbows. Kind of a half-assed crucifixion. Maybe the killer couldn't get the Vic all the way up, so he just left him sitting there. The primary wounds are to the chest. Stab wounds with a double-edged knife. Something large and very sharp, like a hunting knife. Full examination of the body will confirm. Some bruising around the upper arms and shoulders, deep enough to show finger marks. The killer held him down to put the knife in. Whoever did it walked into this room with the intention of killing this man. This was no struggle getting out of hand. Paramortem wound to the throat, at or just after the time of death to let the blood. Very neat, which is how we know it wasn't inflicted while the victim was able to struggle. A white ceramic bowl was used to collect the blood. The bowl is on the floor by the fireplace, still partly full. The Brovsky, 
You want to take the finger painting? Sure. Six symbols are painted on the walls in the victim's blood. Two on the pieces of framed art, one on the door to the bedroom, two on the kitchen cabinets, and one on the refrigerator door. They were done quickly, but not in a panic. The killer either had them memorized or brought reference. You know him? Uh, the bedroom door is the sigil of Balbarith, great duke of hell from the Ars Goetia. Cabinets are the alchemical symbols for copper and iron. Refrigerator is the symbol of a demon called Morax. The ones on the pictures I don't know off the top of my head. Time was you'd reel off half the key of Solomon. You're getting rusty. Or the killer's a lousy artist. You'll have to take pictures, do an inventory, cross-reference with what the cops have, make sure we didn't miss anything. Sounded like they're way out of their depth. Still, gotta be thorough. Gotta be thorough. This place isn't open yet, right? That's what the manager said. You think the kitchens are running? I could do with lunch. Are you recording this? No, we'll just take notes. I thought you recorded everything, like on the TV. Well, that's the police interviewing witnesses at the station. We're not the police, and this isn't the station. That's nice. The Grand Lodge? It's okay. It's supposed to be for all the tourists to come and eat and drink after they get back from skiing. You know, all cozy, like they're all friends. You need anything before we get started? Coffee? Water? I got your cook to run us up some pastrami sandwiches earlier. I could probably twist his arm again. No, no. I'm good. Can you confirm your name and your role here? Maria Barris. I'm with housekeeping. Why don't you tell us what happened this morning from the beginning? I was collecting linen from the chalets we're using for the staff. Mikey's was the third I came to. I had my little cart with me. I rang the buzzer, but he didn't come to the door, so I guessed he was out fixing something. Always something needs fixing, you know? The place hasn't opened yet, so it's falling down, it seems like. So I opened the door and, well, I saw it. The, the things they drew in the blood. And then him. Did you know Mikey? Sure. Everyone knows everyone, pretty much. Did you like him? Like him? Yeah. Was he a nice guy? I know we're not supposed to speak ill of the dead, but if he wasn't a nice guy, it's okay for you to tell us. We need to know. I never talked to him much, I guess. Uh, we didn't really have much in common. Anything unusual about this morning? People around you hadn't seen before? Any change from routine? No, nothing. And what about before this morning? What do you mean? Anything strange? Things you couldn't explain? Maybe something you didn't tell anyone else because they wouldn't have believed you. Oh, no. Nothing like that. We won't judge you, Maria. We won't laugh or say you're crazy. I don't think you're someone who would lie. We will believe you. There was one thing a month ago, just after I started here. I saw it on the mountain, maybe a hundred yards from me, near where the trees start. It was night, but I know that the moon was out. It was a bear. I know there are lots of bears out there. Holly gave us a talk warning about them. But this one had six legs. Six legs? Definitely. I saw it walk away, and lots of eyes, more than two. Like a spider's eyes all over its face. Please don't tell anyone I saw it. They'll want to lock me away. Don't worry. We're not interested in getting anyone into trouble except for the killer. And we know that's not you. You said you opened the door? What? When you went to Mikey's chalet, you opened the door when he didn't answer the buzzer. Was the door locked? Yes. Then how did you open it? I have a master key. Housekeeping all do. Most of the staff, I think. I see. We might have to ask you more. We're requesting that no one leave the resort until we're done. That's okay. I don't have anywhere else to go. Mr. 
Mr. Tancredi, you're the cook here? Yeah, head chef. It's just me right now. They'll get more in the kitchen when the place opens. If it opens. You think it won't? Nothing else out here. They say the snow is good in season, but it's going to have to be like freaking Kit's Bull if it's going to pull in the tourists. You know a lot about it. I've been around. Worked in a bunch of places. Did you know the victim? Mikey? Yeah. Damn shame. He was okay. Just okay? You know, sound. One of the guys. You didn't hear this from me, but he had the hookup. He supplied drugs. Just weed. Must have got it from someone in Scarslow. Nothing else coming through here. We don't even have any good, honest meth heads. So, it was either this middle-of-the-road stuff Mikey got hold of, or raid the liquor cabinets. You ever have trouble with anyone? Maybe he owed money to a supplier or something like that? What? You think someone nailed him to the wall over a hundred bucks worth of weed? We didn't say anyone got nailed to anything. Come on, everyone knows. The cops were talking about it while I was serving them coffee. Nailed to the wall. Blood pentagrams everywhere. Mikey was as small time as it got. Wasn't a dealer that did that. Mikey wasn't worth the trouble. So who do you think did it? Kids. Kids? You know, black trench coats, eyeliner, hate their dads. Kids. Watched too many horror movies and thought they were the first people to light black candles and hail Satan. They keep one-upping each other. First it's do this spell, then it's sacrifice this pet. Then it's kill an actual person. It happens, right? Not very often. But it does happen. Anything else about this place? Anything weird? Not really. So there was something? Nothing. Nothing really. Just the lights. The northern lights. Aurora whatever. Sometimes it makes shapes, like there are things flying around up there, leaving a trail behind them. And noises at night, from the woods on the lower slopes. Noises like what? Talking. Whispering. And laughing. Sounded like children. I figured it was just me hearing things in the wind, but one time, I heard them singing. The children? Yeah, little girls singing. And one time I found a nest of great fox cubs. I guess the mom had died. They were deformed. One had two heads. It was like two of them had been cut in half and the front half stitched together. Another had this transparent skin, like clear gel. The others had five or six legs. I think they were dead. I didn't hang around to check. I couldn't find them again. Guess a bobcat or something got them. Thank you, Mr. Tancredi. We may have more questions for you later. Don't go anywhere. Hi again, Walter. You don't look as shook up as I expected. Way I heard it, the place had interior decorating by Jeffrey Dahmer. What did you hear? Blood and guts everywhere. Mikey cut into pieces. Pentagrams and skulls on the wall. What's your role here, just for the record? Bus boy, dog's body, fetching and carrying. Taking bags if there are ever any tourists to bring them. Sounds like the kind of guy who knows everyone. Sorta. That's not difficult right now, though. We're a skeleton crew until we open. Not everyone thinks this place will open. I'll admit, it's not a dead cert. No one's ever heard of this place. No history of skiing, even if the slopes are supposed to be good for it. Plus, when word gets out someone held a black mass in Chalet 4, we ain't gonna be at the top of anyone's bucket list. Did you know the deceased? Mikey? Sure. Nice guy. Kind of funny. He was Mr. Fix-It around here. Liked playing music real loud while he worked. Southern rock stuff. A few of us liked to hang out round back, smoking. Like we were the bad kids at school. 
He told stories about bumming around Texas. Don't know how he ended up here. Did Mikey Sanchez ever sell you drugs? Well, do I gotta take the fifth or something? We're the FBI, Walter. We're not the badged-up mall cops they have around here. We don't care about a few baggies of weed. The only thing we care about is why Mikey Sanchez died and who killed him. Sorry. Still a little jumpy. Not every day that a co-worker gets turned into meatloaf. Sure. Mikey dealt a little. I didn't buy anything myself, but he brought stuff in pretty regular. Nothing hard. Not what I heard. Anything else going on here? Anything criminal? Anything unusual? That depends on what would be unusual. People you don't know. Seeing strange things. Unexplained events. Anything that might stand out. I might have seen something in the lake. Lake Apisawa. Yeah. You know what the name Apisawa means? It's Crow. They're the people that used to live around here. It's from their word for death rattle. The sound you make when you die. Anyway, I was out there taking a breather. It's calm out there. Real pretty at night. And there was something in the water. You mean like a body? No. Something way out in the middle of the lake. Something really big. It moved under the water. Just beneath the surface. Making it kind of bulge as it moved. It was huge. It's stupid, but... The first thing I thought was... It's a submarine. Obviously it couldn't have been. Either it was some weird wave, like one of those weird perfect storm kind of things, or or, or it was the Loch Ness Monster. I see. Could you estimate its size? Not really. Just real big. Kind of expected you to laugh at me, to be honest. Talking about sea monsters. We've heard stranger. I bet. We might have to talk to you again later. Sure. Not like I have plans to cancel. Hey guys, Pacific here with a quick ad break. And a reminder, ad-free and bonus episodes and monthly postcards are available at our Patreon at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And now... Back to our show. Uh, Mr. Holly! The manager said we'd find you in here. Yeah, I'm Holly. You hear about the murder? That's right. Uh, you want to put something on, sir? You're the one who walked into the locker room. You don't like what you see? That's your problem. Can you confirm your name and role here? Franklin Holly. I'm the ski instructor. Doing much of that right now? I'm marking out the slopes, scouting the trails around here. I got plenty to do before the tourists show up. Do you know the victim, Mikey Sanchez? Not really. Word is, he dealt drugs. <laughs> really? I don't put that crap in my body. Is that why someone killed him? Maybe. But not why someone painted that stuff on the walls. What do you know about that? It's just what's been going around. Someone killed Sanchez and painted occult stuff on the walls of a chalet. You don't seem too shaken by it. Don't get me wrong. Sounds pretty damn sick what happened to him. And whoever did it is stone cold crazy. But like I said, I didn't know him except to say hi to. And you didn't see anything unusual this morning? No. I was up on the mountain. First I knew of it was when I came back to the lodge and saw the police cars. And before today? One of the housekeeping girls says she saw a little girl in the woods. I haven't seen anything weird myself. Sorry, agents. I wish I could tell you Bigfoot did it. I see. We done? For now. 
We've asked Mr. Fulton to make sure no one leaves the premises and staff are not to go anywhere alone. We'll have more questions later. Hope you find the guy. He's too screwed up not to do it again. No, excuse me. I gotta go towel off. Did you get a look at it? I was trying not to. The tattoo. The footprints on his ass? Two green footprints tattooed on the buttocks. It's called the Jolly Green. Is that a kink thing? He's an Air Force pararescue man. The tattoo is a reference to the helicopter they used in Vietnam. They nicknamed it the Jolly Green Giant. When it landed, it left impressions in the fields and rice paddies. The Jolly Green footprint. Our ski instructor was an Air Force special operator. So what's he doing teaching tourists to ski way out here? An able-bodied special forces guy can walk into any security job they want and earn twice as much as the next guy, assuming the butt tattoo is legit. We've got a few suspects to work on. I think we know which one to start with. You sure he won't find out? We won't tell him if you don't. Because I'm guessing he could kick my ass for the practice. Here we go. Room 24. Thanks, Walter. Stick around. Much more of this, and Quantico will have to put me on the payroll. You sure this is legal? We're the FBI. We can do whatever we want. Don't worry, Walter. We're almost certain you didn't kill Sanchez. Almost certain? Like, 99%? More like 80. Holly keeps this place neat. Military habits stick around. Closet's clear. Desk drawer, too. Nothing hidden in either. Ah, nothing under the bed. Guess he's not that stupid. Lots of books on skiing. Checks out, I suppose. There was something taped under this chair. Weapon? Maybe. Hey, Walter. These rooms are all the same, right? Yeah. This one's the same as mine. You keep anything hidden in yours? Drugs? Porn stash? What? No. If there's a place you can hide things in these rooms, that would really help us out. An air vent? Wall cavity? Anything like that? The, uh... The panel underneath the bathroom sink comes away real easy. Just don't ask what I keep under there. I'll check it out. Got anything? It's a book. Secrets of the Hidden Word. Unlock the power of the occult. Looks like one for you. Let me see. There's one of the symbols on the kitchen cabinets. It's the rune for the Norse god Yingwei. The others are in here too. There's Balbareth. So Holly is our blood artist. Except this thing is junk. It's for dabblers. They sell it in the same place you buy your crystals and dream catchers. Just a few half-assed spells and spooky pictures. A real occultist wouldn't be seen dead with this. He's a beginner. A, a poser. Or he wants someone to think there's a real black magician on the loose. I think we need to speak with Parajumper Holly. We should be prepared for a very frank discussion. Walter! Yeah? You guys found anything in there? How do we get to the slopes? There's no ski lift yet. Mr. Fulton said they're putting one in next season, once the place makes some money. For now, we use the old hiking trails. If Holly isn't at the Grand Lodge, he'll be on the mountain. It's his way out. Then we check the lodge. And when we don't find him, we hit the slopes. Mr. Holly! (laughs) Agents, I didn't think you two would enjoy it up here in the cold. None of the staff should go out on their own. I don't see anybody else out here with you. Maybe. But when the snow really starts falling, this is going to be our intermediate slope and someone has to know where it starts and ends. The work doesn't stop because someone died. Is that really why you're out here, Mr. Holly? 
someone who planned ahead would have an escape route. Maybe a cache of gear buried in case things went south. That escape route would be across ground he knew, like this mountainside. Something you want to tell me, agents? I assume you're a good soldier. Pararescue man. But you're a lousy researcher. If you tried finding some real occult texts instead of throwing out random symbols from the first fake magic book you found, we might have actually thought there was a satanic killer on the list. Sounds like you're making a hell of an accusation. Accusations are for when there is a doubt. You killed Mikey Sanchez. That's a simple statement of fact. We're not in an interview room. We're not in court. We can talk about this like real people. You gonna try and take me in? The regular FBI would, but we're not really on the books. Sometimes we have to skip due process to make sure something worse doesn't happen. So whether we take you in depends on why you did it, and if there really is something worse out there. Oh, there's something worse. Has been since before the old military base was here. The things those boys saw back in the 50s, they passed it down. Old stories about how there's something beneath the ground here. It changes you. It can speak to you. The dead at the summer camp. The ones who went missing before that. You know some crazy bastard came out here in the 60s with his hippie buddies and they all lost their minds? Should have made the news like Manson in Heaven's Gate. But it never did. It all gets forgotten about, but the soldiers remembered. When I heard about it, I asked myself, what's happening at Shibbets Vale now? And I found out some idiot was trying to build a ski resort. And then you committed a fake occult murder to scare the tourists away. You have any idea how many people would die if this place got off the ground? Hell, dead and worse. If word around the campfire says wicker man nutcase is killing off people at Whitetail Lodge, the place fails and all those tourists won't be walking around into the jaws of whatever the hell's living underneath us. So you decided someone had to die? To save a hell of a lot more. It's the Parajumper's motto that others may live. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> You'd be surprised what we understand. Why did you choose Sanchez? Because he was an asshole. He sold a few bags of weed and thought he was the Fonz. Now you know the why. Are you going to arrest me? We haven't decided yet. I have. Down! You hit? I'm fine. Stay behind the tree. That guy can shoot. Do you see him? No, he took off up the slope. Good job the snow's just fallen. Not even special forces can cover a trail through that. Well, we have to ask if we want to follow him. He's a trained killer. Oh, we're no slouches ourselves. And he'll try to kill again. He's convinced he's right. Maybe he is. If there's something that dangerous here... A couple of deaths to keep everyone away could be justified. The UIU's done a lot worse. It sounds like you're trying to convince yourself. Is it working? Not really. You want to know what he knows? What's underneath Shibbet's Veil? Yep. Then let's go. The tracks keep going up. He's running. How long can he keep that up? There, the foot of the tree. Something's been dug up. That's a rifle case. Must be a weapons cache he buried. So, now he's got a rifle. There's a walkie-talkie, too. Just one? Yeah. Hi, Holly. Asia your victim. I know you can't just let me go, and I can't let you take me in. So, someone isn't getting off this mountain. If I'm the one who doesn't make it, I need to ask you two a favor. What is it? Make sure no one ever settles in Shibbets Fail. The feds must have a way. Whatever permits someone needs, they don't get it. Whoever needs muscling off the land, you do it. We're both 
soldiers. We both have a duty to protect this country. We're on the same side, even if we're enemies right now. Can I trust you to do what has to be done? It might not be our decision. I don't suppose I can convince you to leave me be, Asian. We might not be regular feds, but we're still law enforcement. We can't just leave a madman in the woods picking off random tourists. That's what I thought. I'll be waiting. You see that? Up the slope? <laughs> Looks like a cabin. Good eye. For hikers, maybe. Or the old logging operations around here. Think he's holed up there? There are no tracks here. The trees kept the snow off the ground. Some of the lower branches are broken off in that direction. He passed that way. Okay. Skirt around. Try to approach from the back. I'll go in from the front and try to keep him talking. Stay in contact on the radio, but only speak if you have to. Gotcha. First one to see him shoots him? That's an affirmative. Extreme prejudice. You still there, Holly? You know that's not my real name, right? <laughs> Something you'd rather I call you? Nah, Holly's fine. So you guys aren't regular feds? Oh, we're with the Unusual Incidents Unit. The basement dweller is out of Quantico. They give us all the Bigfoot sightings and flying saucers. I guess you've seen some shit. You have no idea. Something's wrong with the living things in these mountains. I've seen deer with crab claws. Bugs the size of my head. These plants with fruit that'll trip you on harder than LSD. It's all one big living creature with cells and organs. And the brain is the thing underneath us the Flyboys found in the 50s. It thinks we're a disease. As soon as the tourists hit the slopes, it's all gonna come sweeping down off the mountain and purify the hell out of everything. An agent? Yes, Holly? Well done getting behind me. But I've been surrounded before. Dabrowski, he knows you're there. Dabrowski, you there? Talk to me. He damn near took my head off. That's a powerful rifle. Do you see him? There's a window, but it's dark inside. Can you get closer? It's too open. He'll plug me before I get halfway. Holly, you missed. Haven't fired at a live target in a while. Back in the day, I'd have put one between your buddy's eyes. Now you're gonna come in through the front door, right? Maybe. Or we might just take you out until backup arrives. You basement dwellers are gonna summon a chopper full of hostage rescue goons out of nowhere? No. It's just you two out here. I face worse odds, believe me. I see him. He's watching the door. Take him. Did you get him? Yeah. Not sure where. Can't see him anymore. Holly. Holly, you still alive? Got me in the way. How are you shooting that rifle one-handed? I'm at the window. Hey, agent. You know the only thing that puts tourists off more than a mysterious death? Oh, Christ, he's got a grenade. Two mysterious deaths. Dabrowski, you okay? God, the smoke. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I wasn't a frag. Must be white phosphorus. Oh, Jesus, I can smell them cooking. The whole place is going up. We could hang around and see what we can find and what's left. <sighs> that stuff burns at 5,000 degrees. There won't be anything left. Then get back to me. We have to return to the lodge and let Control know what happened. Wish we'd got him alive. We know what he did and why. Way above the UIU average. Let's agree to call that a win. I can get behind that. 
Congratulations, Agent. Another case closed. Not that anyone will ever know. The report by Special Agents Dabrowski and Pickton was classified by the Unusual Incidents Unit, and the events at the Whitetail Lodge Resort were sanitized. According to the public record, retired Air Force pararescue jumper Alexander Berwick, who was using the alias Franklin Holly, murdered Mikey Sanchez in a dispute over a minor drug deal, and later took his own life in an isolated cabin after suffering a psychotic break. Only the UIU, and now the Foundation know any different. The Whitetail Lodge Resort shut down prior to the opening of the 1997 skiing season. The reason was poor advanced bookings, which caused investors to pull their money. Maybe the gruesome murder-suicide was the reason the resort never opened its doors to visitors. Maybe not. But it certainly can't have helped. The killer referred to something underneath Shibbet's veil, presumably SCP but also other anomalies with the area's wildlife. The interviews with the resort staff suggested still more anomalous events, such as humanoid apparitions, aerial phenomena, and a possible sighting of SCP in Lake Eposawa. The agents' debriefing and their field and interview recordings refer to other occupants of Shibbet's Vale, such as a military base and a summer camp. These serve as signposts for further research into the area and associated anomalies. Project Serapis will have to go back at least to the 1950s military presence. Maybe further. That concludes my research into the events of Shibbets Vale during 1997. This information is classified level 5 for O12 eyes only. Agent Hector Gallio, signing off. This week's episode is possible thanks to our patrons. Joining us this week was Amethyst Talon, Kyle Runnels, Ink Sands, Carl Marshall, Perry McDaniel, Michael Carnahan, Sunshade, Al C., Citizen Trent, Spring Lonsdale, Matt, Digital Escape, but with ones and threes instead of I's and E's, Luciana Lawrence, Silk, Zach Malak, Hypercore Ripper, Alligators and Crocodiles are the same thing, Nick, and Isabel McCartan. Thanks guys, your support means the world and it helps us do what we do. Project Serapis was written by the incredible Ben Counter. Gallio was John Grills. Pickton was Antoinette Barry Snowden. Dabrowski was Graham Rowett. Fulton was Brandon Nguyen. Walter was David Dark. Maria was Madeline Moore. Tancredi was Eric Kemp. And Holly was Damon Alums. Our line editor is Daisy McNamara. Our sound designer is Dana Creaseman. And all of our music was done by the incredible and ever-talented Tom Rory Parsons. I'm your showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah, and our producers are Tom Owen and Brad Miska. This is a bloody disgusting show. For more information, visit scparchives.com. <laughs>